Morning everybody, Andy here again. First things first, I should put the figures down below. The deaths just the 338, so we were getting lower as I said before, and the total now 36,042. This is day 59 by the way. And as you might have noticed, yes, this is what I think everyone's terming now, like a lockdown haircut, isn't it? <laughs> everyone's just going zoop. And so I've got the clippers out this morning, a uh, number one that we have got. And I'm not sure that my hair's ever been this uh, short, actually. Even when I was born, I'm not sure that I had hair quite as short as this. So it's uh, I must admit, the first time I put the clippers on and did that first little bit, and I thought, uh, is this the right thing to do? But it's all right. I don't mind. I'm getting used to it already. Julie doesn't mind. It's, uh, you know, we're, we're halfway there. So, and if need be, I can just stay indoors for a few days. Although I'm doing this, I suppose I'm putting myself out to the world. Anyway. <laughs> what I would talk about is that sort of waiting game that we're all in at the moment. We seem to be stuck in a sort of a, a state of limbo, aren't we? All of us in lots of ways. We're all waiting to see what happens next. Um, whether it be with your work, you know, what's going to happen with your job? Are you going to have a job, you know, if you're furloughed? Um, even if you are working, uh, and as I've said before, the people who are working are generally working harder than they've ever been. But I've already hearing little things about firms and companies looking at the future of their particular companies and the roles within them and whether they can change things slightly you know more working from home maybe consolidate roles because obviously they've all taken costs and and hits through all of this haven't they so there's a lot of changes coming um in the future so you're all everybody's sort of starting to realize that and starting to wait and see what happens and then also we've all just got our life and what's what you know what are we going to be allowed to do in the future we've got <clears throat> here in the uk our current restrictions are in place to the 1st of June, then we may go to the next stage and then become the 4th of July, I believe is the next stage. What's going to happen with them? You know, are we going to be able to do things? Because there are companies and sectors of industry lobbying to get their little sector back up and running in some form earlier than others. And I can see that, of course, totally understand. But we're waiting. We don't know. We're waiting to see what happens. Um, and even with, mainly with our sort of social lives as well, because of, you know, we all want to socialise, don't we? That's one thing that we, we've not been able to do. Yes, I, you know, you can meet other people now <clears throat> from outside of your immediate household, but you're still going to be six metres apart. You still haven't got that, you know, the, 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 the personal side of things that you used to have before. I talked before about, you know, looking back at old photos and videos of what we used to do literally two, three months ago in pubs and... <clears throat> Just to socialise in generally, just going into a pub <clears throat> and meeting up with friends, having a beer, having a, a you know a coffee, which you can't do. And when are we going to be able to do that again? Will we ever be able to do it again? Will that cafe, that pub, that restaurant still be there? You know, it's all that type of thing. It's a bit doom mongery, but it is that thing. We are stuck in that state of limbo. And another thing that I thought of with this is that we're all in some ways we're waiting for that second spike. We're waiting for that second wave of infections to come along that we've been sort of promised, you know, if you want to put it that way. We've been told because, you know, it's expected to happen, especially the way that things have gone here. And I've seen it in um, elsewhere as well. I mean, the restrictions were relaxed here and everybody's sort of flocked to the beaches and all that. You may well have seen photos from your area. It's happened here in Hastings as well. It's happened in Northern Europe and other places, and I've seen gatherings elsewhere. I've you know, the reports of people having big parties and all this sort of stuff. I've seen it in America where people are having their big protests and that, but they're all they're all tightly packed to all these people. So we're all half expecting this big this next spike to come along, and um, you know whether it be in the next week, two weeks. Um, I think with that is if that I mean I'm I'm expecting it to happen as well, but that's just you know how bad is it going to be? What's going to happen when that comes in? Are the government then going to say right, okay, we we did tell you we are going to have a lockdown now because it's the only way that we're actually going to enforce this. It's the only way we're going to get through this is to do it properly <laughs> this time. You will stay in your homes, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, is that going to happen? You know, um, and what happens if this second wave of infections? doesn't materialise for whatever reason because you know it hasn't yet it may well I mean as I said I, I believe it probably will but I'm no scientist um, so if that doesn't happen what happens after that you know you think well hang on a minute we were told this was going to happen it didn't happen where do we go from here so we are 
in a real, as I said, a real state of limbo. It's a real waiting game. And, um, and some people are a bit more impatient than others. We all want to get out there. I totally understand that. You can see that already. People are starting to get impatient, hence the fact they're going out and doing things that they possibly uh, shouldn't do, which may help with that <laughs> second wave coming along. In some ways, you want that to come along to sort itself out, and then we can move on from there, because it will be a sort of a telling point, as I said. But ultimately, we don't know. We're, we're sitting here, we're all, well, most of us are trying to obey the, the restrictions as they are and to do our own little bit. As I've said before, we all need to be able to look ourselves in the mirror when this is all finished and say, well, I did my bit. I tried to do what was right for myself, my family and the people around me and for everybody for that matter. Um, but uh, some people maybe aren't doing that. But uh, I think I'm, my conscience is pretty clear so far. But, you know, we're all getting to that point where we think, well, they're not doing it. You know. But anyway, <laughs> I should leave you with that thought. So stay strong, stay safe, and hopefully I'll just speak to you tomorrow. Goodbye.